right now, please give a warm round of applause to our musical heritage, Ronnie Barrage and Orchestra. I love music, I love all types of music. And that love showed as percussionist, composer, and University City native Ronnie Barrage performed at the 2022 edition of Music at the Intersection in Grand Center. His appearance capped off a residency in partnership with multiple artistic entities, including the Kranzberg Art Center. This concert of original works was a musical homecoming for Barrage, who lives in New York. Considered one of the finest musicians in the jazz world, Barrage jokes that his artistic journey began pretty much from birth. My grandparents told me stories. I used to pull the pots and pans out and just play them in my diapers. And, but the, the, the family, the, it started my family, right? So my great-grandfather played oboe and trombone in the first American circus band. And his brother played, I think it's Carnet. So the two of them together, I have pictures. I did the research from the first American circus band that turned into Barnum and Bailey Circus. It was a all black band, pretty primarily. Barrage's grandfather was Alan David Marr. He was a poet whose writings on social justice issues have inspired music by Barrage. Marr regularly took his grandson and the rest of his family to see the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra while at the same time exposing them to the best of jazz and blues. My grandfather had a, a grand piano in the living room. My mother and then her brothers, everybody had different musical tastes, so there was always music on the third floor, the second floor, the first floor, all types of different music. Plus, we liked movies. So, you know, we would sit on the couch, the entire family. I'm the youngest, and we're looking at, like, Magnificent Seven or... Dr. Shivago or <laughs> some great score. Exodus. Or, there you go. And I would, they, everybody in the family will tell you that I would get up off the couch and go to the piano and start picking out those melodies. But it wasn't his prowess on the keyboards that led a young barrage to share the stage with a music legend. I got an opportunity to do two concerts with the great Duke Ellington. I was nine years old and I was reciting poetry. He had his orchestra, his sacred orchestra. Of course, I didn't know who he was. I mean, the music was always playing in the house. You know, and a couple years later, I'm like, oh, that was the guy, that was the guy. And then growing up and, and playing and then learning about his legacy that this man was so brilliant and he composed for his musicians. I think that um, really before I even knew what it was to really compose. It stuck with me that that's what he did because that's what I do. I handpick my musicians. You know, I compose my music specifically for their sound. Our conversation with Ronnie Barrage took place at his high school alma mater, University City High. And look who we have over here. Yep, and there I am. Barrage's photo was among those of dozens of other distinguished alumni on display in the high school's Hall of Fame. When they inducted me into the Hall of Fame and gave me the book of all of the people that are, and I'm like, I, had, I, I didn't have any idea that it was so much talent that came out of the school. I knew while I was here, there was tons of talent. I can go all over the world and sometimes somebody will say, I heard you went to U-City. I'm like, yeah, they say, I did too. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It seems like it doesn't matter where I am. It could be anywhere in the world. And I've been on all seven continents playing music and teaching and and research and all types of things, but I always find there's somebody who always says, I, I went to U-City too, and it's just amazing, the, the, the connection. Oh, okay. J.D., I'm thinking you on the first chair. Everybody, this is Rasu. Everybody who don't know him, my uncle's in from Paris. Many of the musicians gathered for this rehearsal came from out of town and are members of Barrage's New York band. Most have roots in St. Louis. In preparing for music at the intersection, Barrage juggles his jobs teaching at two colleges on the East Coast with traveling back and forth to St. Louis to hold sectional rehearsals here. And it'll be a choir over there and uh, strings. 
who glowed in the dark like huge fireflies. And as you might expect, spoken word, noted St. Louis author and poet Quincy Troop. And yes, we retain our magic and power, divinity as mysterious artists do. See you at the festival. This composition, titled Always, is from the album Dance of the Great Spirit by Ronnie Barrage and Holographic Principle. It's a sacred piece that was performed with a choir wedged onto a tightly packed stage under the big top in Grand Center. Over the course of his career, Barrage has performed and recorded with a long roster of distinguished jazz artists. But like many of his contemporaries, he's also a dedicated educator. He explains how music can be a tool for teaching the darker chapters of our country's history and for promoting social justice. And I get students every year that have no clue. They never heard about uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. They never heard about the St. Louis uh, so-called race riots and all of these things that were actually not race riots, but they were more um, terrorist acts uh, placed upon our people. So I tell those stories also through the music, and I tell them when I teach. In addition, Barrage and his wife, who's a geographer and researcher, founded the nonprofit organization World Rhythm Academy. The purpose of that is to be able to bring people from all over the world into other spaces to, especially to deal with people who are underserved and don't have the, the opportunity to meet those types of people and interact with their music or their art form or their language and their things like that. Interaction was no problem with Barrage's Music at the Intersection audience, Despite technical issues that delayed the start of his performance by about 90 minutes, most of his fans stayed until the end, which was nearly 1 a.m. That's making a connection. For Living St. Louis, I'm Ruth Ezel.